Well, good afternoon, friends. Good afternoon, or should I say good morning or good evening, depending where you are. Well, wherever you are in the world, uh, welcome. Welcome to another conversation here. Uh, we call it the uh, Conversations with Dune and Friends. And uh, my name is Dune Nguyen. And uh, today we have uh, a wonderful guest joining us uh, uh, who uh, you're going to love hearing uh, from and, and about. And uh, uh, she's going to share her music. She's going to share her uh, um, stories of overcoming uh, life's challenges and, and uh, uh, again, uh, overcoming and, and in fact succeeding and, and uh, really um, making the best out of life. And uh, uh, we're going to have our wonderful guest, uh, Lynn Schwill, uh, joining us. Now, um, before we get into uh, the conversation, which will go for an hour and a bit, we probably run uh, a little bit past the hour mark, but uh, hopefully you're able to join us for the duration here and uh, feel free to uh, comment and feel free to um, ask Lynn questions and, and provide your encouragement and, and uh, support along the way and uh, join the community, join the community in this conversation. So with that, let me just do a, a, a introduction here of Lynn's background so you know who it is that you are hearing from and uh, so already we have uh, a few people uh, watching there if you can uh, let us know if you can hear us that would be great if you can hear me loud and clear that means later on when Lynn comes on you'll be able to hear her loud and clear as well and uh, so that would be great if you could uh, uh, confirm and uh, so let's get into the introduction here Lynn Schwill. Um now making her home um, in, in Beaumont, Alberta, Lynn Schwill is uh, was raised by her grandmother in uh, uh, Adrasen, um, and uh, with no radio or stereo. Oh, thank you, Alan, for uh, Mr. Alan Quilly joined us and said uh, good afternoon. So um, yes, you can hear us. That's wonderful. So again, uh, at an early age, um, uh, Lynn would, um, you know. Uh, let me let me just back up a little bit here. Uh, so, so with no radio or stereo, her earliest exposures to music was uh, the granny granny singing uh, Irish folk tunes. Uh, at an early age, Lynn would uh, pretend uh, the stars were uh, stage lights, and, and she would perform grand outdoor concerts for the cows at night um, on an overturned orange crate. Now, put that picture in your head: an overturned orange crate. That would be where the crowds are. Um, this motivated Granny to uh, uh, scrape together enough money to pay for just um, for just a few months of opera and accordion lessons. And Lynn shelved her, uh, sh shelved her uh, singing, and, and uh, after high school, um, devoted her attention to her marriage and, and uh, parenting uh, four children. And uh, 25 years later, though, after her marriage ended, uh, she resumed her passion for singing and has since vowed wow fans uh, across Alberta. Uh, she has performed uh, at several major festivals uh, throughout, um, uh, so in, including Calgary International Blues Festival, uh, Beaumont Blues and, and Roots Festival, uh, Big Valley, uh, Big Valley Jamboree there, I presume. So Big Valley and, and the Rock Fest uh, on the uh, Back 40 stage. Difficult life experiences lend uh, Lynn's vocals um, a powerful intensity fraught with uh, smoky and sultry and sometimes gritty authentic emotion. Now she gains new fans at every performance and uh, she was also um, uh, she has also enjoyed invitations uh, on stage to sing with many blues celebrities, including uh, Tommy Castro, Rusty Reed, Russell J Jackson, Monkey Junk, and Kenny, blues boss Wayne. Now, providing background vocals uh, on several tracks on, of Kenny's CD uh, inspired by the blues, Lynn is currently uh, co-writing with uh, several songwriters uh, and plans to finish recording her live debut CD with uh, producer Miles Wilkinson. The Lynn Schwill band with members uh, being uh, Jeff Barlett, uh, Percy Marshall, Greg Pretty, uh, David Aid, uh, and Rosemary Seaver, uh, as well as Lynn, of course, being the singer, uh, represented Northern Alberta at the International Blues Ch uh, Competition in Memphis, Tennessee in January 2020. Lynn's national film, TV, and credits include CBC production, Bla Ballet Luja, Luja, 
So that's B is in ballet, ballet, Luya. Um, and she was a semi-finalist on uh, CMT's uh, reality series, Karaoke Star. Uh, Lynn was also uh, an award-winning Toastmaster. She is the uh, mother of four children, now adults, including twin boys and another son and, and a daughter. Uh, Lynn went back to school at the age of 43, and, and after upgrading high school courses, she spent a year in general studies, and uh, she then obtained her Bachelor of Applied Communications in, in professional writing uh, uh, four years after that, and uh, so that's a, a great accomplishment. Uh, we all uh, congratulate her on that. Now, Lynn is also uh, uh, a uh, Jorgren's uh, syndrome sufferer and advocates for awareness of this disease. Uh, she has um, she was diagnosed with the syndrome after years of suffering uh, uh, debilitating uh, symptoms and, and uh, a few close calls, emergency room visits. Uh, she uh, she has uh, since undergone numerous uh, uh, maxillofacial and oral so surgeries and and received uh, an intense com and complete mouth restoration. Jorgensen uh, or Jorgens patients can suffer severe dental issues among many other symptoms. And she said, I'm so much healthier and finally, uh, I, and I feel the joy on the inside. I can now show the world on the outside uh, and I can sing it with no shame holding back anymore. I feel li so liberated and, and uh, that hell, uh, life is good again, uh, liberated from that hell. And um, so although COVID-19 has delayed her career, uh, Lynn looks forward to a, a world resume with uh, some resemblance of uh, normalcy um, when she can sing and uh, once again, unconstrained. With that wonderful introduction, uh, folks, uh, please help me in welcoming a wonderful guest, Lynn Schwell. Lynn, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing, I'm doing well. You good, know, good. You, you asked me to write something and I turned into a... Uh, literary windbag. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's a wonderful introduction. Tell us more though. Maybe you have a story to fill in the, the, the gaps a little bit before we get rolling on the questions and, and the music and the photos and the memories. Uh, tell us a bit more about your background uh, in your own words, um, sort of what else comes to mind? Uh, um, what, uh, what brought you here today to this present day here, COVID and all? Wow. That's a big question. I actually, when you were reading my bio, I thought to myself, there's not going to be much left to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Um, well, I was uh, very young when I went out to live with my grandmother. I was just before my fifth birthday. And we, lived, we grew up on a farm. And I tell my kids all the time, what a, what a rich childhood to be able to grow up on a farm. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of manual labor work. To this day, I'll work. 10 hours in my yard before I'll work 10 minutes on my dishes. <laughs> wow. I just love manual labor. Um, what else can I tell you? So I grew up on the farm. It wasn't a very happy childhood. Mm -hmm. um, and it left me with a lot of issues in my early adult years. And I found myself not in one, but two less than healthy relationships. After the second relationship, I realized that I was repeating a pattern and I went and got help from um, the CASA Center. And um, kudos to the CASA Center. They do such wonderful work. And I spent three and a half years in group therapy. The first year was mostly therapy for me. And then the last couple of years, I was kind of like a senior member to help counsel other women who were in unhealthy relationships, mm -hmm. abusive, abusive relationships. Mm -hmm. And um, a short, uh, about 10 years later, I had managed, because of the therapy, to turn my life around. I left the relationship, I got divorced. A month later, I was enrolled in college, got my degree, five and a half years after that, um, got a career, and mm -hmm. bought a new car, bought a house, took my kids to Hawaii. Yeah. And just a month after getting back from Hawaii, I stood on the stage at um, the Western Hotel mm -hmm. as the keynote speaker for the CASA Center for their annual fundraiser mm -hmm. in front of the mayor and the lieutenant governor and all kinds of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't a dry eye in the house. Um, mm -hmm. And my, my closing line in that speech was how I watched my kids play in the waves in Waikiki and thought to myself, you broke it. You broke the cycle. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing about it is this is so cool. Mm -hmm. My daughter 
I get a little choked up when I talk about that. My daughter is just finishing up her degree in psychology, and she is now doing volunteer work for the county. Mm -hmm. so, wow, wonderful. Giving back, yeah. Yeah, I'm so proud. Uh, circle of life, full circle. and uh, Yeah. Yeah. Now, thank you for sharing that uh, story and a bit of a background there. Mr. Alan Quilly uh, chimed in. Uh, the reason I didn't bring up this uh, thing here because I missed it. When I finish your intro, Alan says, the crowd applause, right? Now, <laughs> Thanks, <Alan. laughs> of, of course, with the delay in the technology, it comes in a few seconds later. And so when it came in, I didn't want to display it when you were sharing a, a sad point of your story. I didn't want to share the, the crowd applause. So so here it is. This was when uh, I finished the introduction. <laughs> but you saw there, you saw um, uh, Alan uh, greeting uh, there from the very beginning and Mr. Quilly, Alan Quilly. And of course, MJ Smallman says uh, hi there, uh, Dune and uh, Lynn. And uh, yeah, so um, certainly uh, folks, please chime in and, and please comment and, and ask Lynn questions and, and uh, interact with us. It's a lot more fun if there's uh, more interaction along the way. So yeah, so with that, uh, so, so Lynn, tell us, uh, we're going to uh, obviously go back in time and, and, and sort of visit various uh, aspects and, and, and decades of your uh, journey there. Uh, but but tell us maybe today today you know uh, in the context of COVID what are you up to these days my friends just maybe we'll start there. Okay, well it's kind of funny because I I'm jealous of all these people and it, kind of jealous like I don't how do I put this I hear a lot about how much time everybody has and how they got to do all these projects and get caught up on their housework and everything else and I have been so all out busy <laughs> I haven't got any of that time. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was up very very late even getting you some 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 material for today and it's just in, in a good way I'm really 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 busy but I mm -hmm. do wish I had some of that downtime too so yeah yeah well you know um, as far as the career goes I I I've kind of been quiet mm -hmm. because well I'm not as techy as a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> We know that, don't we, dear? <laughs> so I've been a little quiet in, in that area, um, just waiting for things to to level out and, and calm down and resume some sense of normalcy. Because I, if I have to learn technology, yeah. I, I'm duped. <laughs> it's a long journey. It's a long journey. It's possible. It's a long, uh, so Mr. Alan Quilly uh, chimed in again here. Says, uh, hopefully you can see it on screen. Uh, he says, uh, Lynn, good to see you healthy and happy. That's good. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. It feels good to be healthy and happy. It does. Yeah. yeah. I'm very blessed. Uh, Dune, at this, we'll, we'll talk about it later, but don't let me forget that I want to send out a huge thank you. Okay. I will. Um, I'll try to remember, but... Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, one of the things that I want to do is maybe uh, early on, I'm going to bring up some photos, my friend, and I, I, I that might help us sort of um, jog various parts of your kind of uh, journey and, and just kind of maybe touch on each photo in whatever way that makes sense that allow us to uh, hear some background and some stories along the way. And, and so with that, I'm going to go ahead and, and do this uh, early on here. We definitely have some music to share with our viewers as well. So, so uh, um, put your dancing shoes on and uh, put your blues kind of mood lights on. We're going to play you some uh, blues as well. Uh, but um, so if, uh, if you could uh, just give us uh, this was uh, fairly recent, I would imagine, Lynn? Yes, this was a photo that Rocco Macri took for us. Um, bless his heart, thank you, Rocco. He's a fabulous photographer, and he volunteered to do our band photos for, um, we had to have official photos for the International Blues Challenge in Memphis. And mm -hmm. I made a mistake in my bio, it wasn't championship, it's challenge. Um, mm -hmm. But I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> You so felt like you felt like a champion, so that's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, so Rocco, is Rocco is a, a great photographer and a great uh, musician as well. In fact, bandmates of uh, Mr. Alan Crilly, I believe, in one of the bands. So, yeah. Uh, so uh, let me just uh, get this in here and uh, tell us about this photo. Oh. This is such a happy time, such a happy memory. This photo is, that's Coco Montoya. And 
I was on the blues cruise and we're in the lineup at the, I guess the morgue or whatever. It's the, the food that's always out, not the formal dining. Mm -hmm. And this is what it's like to be on the blues cruise. You just mm -hmm. sit there, you know, grabbing your toast and grabbing a peach or something. And you look beside you and there's Coco Montoya or Ruthie Foster or, and these people are all so down to earth. They're on a cruise too. So they're, they're vacationing, working holidays, so to speak. Yeah. And everybody's so relaxed and chill and friendly and humble and yeah. In other words, it's five o'clock there. <laughs> you know, it could have been it could have been two a.m. <laughs> there was no time. There was, there was embark and disembark. <laughs> there you go, embark and disembark. <laughs> ah, backstage on the cruise with Tommy Castro. He's, I've got about five photos of Tommy. Every time I see him, I make sure we get a photo. Because, and now I don't even have to ask. He's like, we can do a photo. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Very yeah. cool guy. Okay, this is my um, public speaking coming out. Uh, this, I was the MC at the inaugural Edmonton Winter Blues Festival. Mm -hmm. And I was MCing there. Now tell us more about that. I know we have uh, some uh, mutual uh, Toastmaster friends. Uh, I, I don't know if you know, but I actually joined That's Toast. Too. Yeah, I joined Toastmaster. This is how I joined Toastmaster. I was at a meeting and they want to launch a club and they said, we need a president of the club to launch the club and they voted me in. And so my first time joining Toastmaster, I was the president <laughs> launching a char charter club. But uh, oh, wow. so, so I have that Toastmaster background. In fact, my first song that I have ever written was actually called Toastmaster of District 42. And I performed it in front of uh, 200 Toastmasters and whatnot. And, uh, and it, so anyway, we have that, that common kind of background That's as great. well as uh, speaking in general. So, so tell us more about uh, Toastmasters and, and any interesting uh, insights or stories from there and uh, let's pause on that for a moment uh, yeah tell us more okay well I joined Toastmasters um, as part of the Stantec club when I was working at Stantec mm -hmm. and I joined it because I thought well this would be a good way for me to learn how to fill in dead air on stage when I'm performing mm -hmm. and it did <laughs> table <laughs> topics table topics <laughs> yeah, yeah and um, I ended up doing very well um, became the public relations officer and vice president, I think. I can't remember, it was quite a while ago now. Yeah. And um, won several several uh, levels of competition in Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. And Russ Dan too. Russ, mm -hmm. When I join Toastmasters again, I'm coming for you, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> Russ Dantu, one of the finalists in the uh, international uh, world speaking, uh, public speaking uh, um, championship and whatnot. Russ was on, uh, what, was that, what day was that? Was that Wednesday or Thursday? He was uh, our guest just a few days ago. Was it Monday? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Russ was Monday. See, yeah. I do this every weekday and I get confused as to which who is which day. But uh, yeah, Russ was, uh, yeah. He got well, to the final. Russ and I were in the finals. And yeah. um, I, I don't remember who else. I just remember Russ. Yeah. Because that year, um, the international competition was in Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. And Russ beat me by a margin. <laughs> My speech was about music being an international language. There um, you go. So... Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you talk about table topics. For those of you, us who are in Toastmaster or have, or have been in Toastmaster, you know what that is. For those who are not, tell us just a bit more what is table topic, uh, just so people know what we're talking about. Okay, a table topic is where um, you are timed mm -hmm. for up to two minutes, no less than 30 seconds, is it? It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And up to two minutes, and they, they just randomly throw you a topic, and it's like, go, you speak on it for two minutes off. Yeah. Of yeah, you it's bet. really good practice. Yeah, yeah. All right. Much and they, <laughs> they, they, they circulate it from one person to the next. So you're sitting around the table in a meeting of typically a club doesn't have any more than 20 people. Typically, they, we don't have clubs of 50 or 100 people typically. So it's about 20 people kind of thing. And and, and the, the, the person, the Toastmaster, would actually just call on whoever. So you don't know if your name is going to be next. And when your name is called, you got to stand up and start your speech about that topic or about that question and whatnot uh, is like uh, being in the, one of those uh, pageant uh, where they ask you that question there. But <laughs> yeah. but you try to um, you try to do a good job with it. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. So uh, for uh, the Toastmaster friends out there, there's the connection, folks. 
Tell us about this one. Oh, this is such a fantastic man. I love this man. That is Kenny Blues Boss Wayne. And he was performing at the Blues Cannon in Calgary. And mm -hmm. I went down to Calgary specifically just to go and hear him and watch and stuff. Um, um, so his drummer, Joey DeMarco, um, is, is one of the guys, the first guys I met in Edmonton when I kind of switched from country to blues, discover the blues as I call it. And Joey, Joey kind of gave me a push and got me going. I was so green back then. He put up with so much and he taught me so much. Anyway, he drums for Kenny. And so he told Kenny about me because they were going to be recording here in Edmonton or Sherwood Park or something. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, Sherwood Park. And so Kenny sent me some files and said, you know, would you do this? And I was like, yeah, I certainly will. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm on, uh, I think it's two or three tracks on that Inspired by the Blue CD. Very, very, I have so much respect for Kenny. Yeah. That, that, that's what that picture is. Wonderful. Yeah. Again, Tommy Castro. <laughs> <laughs> your, 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 your yearly fix, or is it uh, exactly. quarterly fish? <laughs> exactly. So I had one ticket to um, see his show in Calgary. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'll travel great distances to see people that, you know, I, I get great joy from seeing. Anyway, uh, this is a really cool memory. So what happened here? I won tickets to the show. So I was in Calgary. I have two really good friends in Calgary. We're going to see their pictures a little later on. Mm -hmm. um, and, in fact, I was on the Blues Cruise to sing at their wedding. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dave and Karen, for the cruise. <laughs> anyway, um... I was with them and we went to the jam at Mikey's that afternoon. Mikey's on 12th. And Tommy's band was there for the jam and Tommy. And they mm -hmm. all left except for Tommy's bass player, who recognized the couple I was with from the Blues Cruise. Mm -hmm. So he stayed uh, to hear me sing. Dave Allen. Hi, Dave and Karen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dave Allen told him, have you heard her sing? And he said, well, she looks familiar. He said, well, you probably heard her at the jams on the Blues Cruise. Mm -hmm. So... He waited for my my set at the jam, and off he went. And I thought, oh, well, that's a very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> well, that night during Tommy's concert, uh, Tommy, by name, invited me up on stage to sing with him. So I guess he was impressed, and and I was absolutely shocked. And here's the worst part: I was coming down with such a chest cold. Mm -hmm. I was like <laughs> coughing away. And, and Tommy says, Lynn, you want to come out and sing with us? And I, this was me. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Because I knew I sounded horrible. Yeah. And um, then I thought, when are you ever going to get a chance to be invited on stage with Tommy Castro again? I don't care if you sound like you're on death's doorstep. You get up there and you sing. So mm -hmm. that's, and it was awesome. It was yeah. so much fun. Wonderful. Hey, hey Lynn, you, your um, sound um, sometimes is uh, nice and loud and sometimes a little quieter. So if you could uh, uh, just maybe a bit closer to the mic or, or just just uh, maintain uh, the volume, that'd be great because sometimes it is a little quiet. But uh, I would love to maybe play uh, some um, some music for our, our viewers out there. So with that, uh, we'll come back to these photos and hear more stories around them. But I would like to maybe go to... Uh, uh, a couple of things. Uh, first thing maybe I want to go to is uh, your website very briefly, and then we're going to play some music, my friend. So uh, tell us uh, about your website, and, and uh, I'm going to bring it up here. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, did you make it yourself? Did someone make it for you? <laughs> no, man, yeah, so not techie. I should be. I'm a technical writer, but writing with words is not actual technology mm -hmm. for me anyway. So yeah. my website, Maggie Tate, who does the Beaumont Blues Festival, uh, Beaumont Blues and Roots Festival website did my website and mm -hmm. she does it completely volunteer and she's kept it going year after year and I bless her heart I am so so grateful to her for all that she does for me she's helped yeah. me write a few grand applications and, yeah. and she there is no end to that woman's heart and, her, mm -hmm. and I just love her in pieces 
Right. Now, before we get into it, I see a couple comments from our viewers that we have Greg Lasky, our mutual friend there, and chimed in. Uh, awesome uh, anthem singer, Spring Convention 2014. Hi. He remembers your uh, role in that, my friend. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. I've forgotten all about that, actually. So I was just telling Dune today that going through my photos and stuff, I just realized how rich of a life I have had, especially the last decade. Mm -hmm. And Lori, I don't know if you know Lori, but Lori, she she said she's a did Toastmaster for a short time also. Wow. Oh, mm -hmm. it's a different Lori, but that that's great. Toastmaster mm -hmm. this is good for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I know Lori has caught a few of these um, interviews here. So thank you, Lori, for uh, tuning in again here. So tell us uh, where, uh, what kinds of things would our viewers or would our folks uh, be able to find on, on your website, my friend? Obviously, uh, shows, uh, dates, and uh, press kit, uh, and videos, right? Yeah, and I did a little bit of a blog bio type thing where I talked about singing to the cows. And, and mm -hmm. So they'll be able to find music free music. We just we just recorded two um, songs at Denman Studios in Sherwood Park. Fantastic studio. Dan and Connie are such generous, gracious people. They are fabulous people, well uh -oh. loved by the community, well respected, and they're actually practically my, my neighbors, hey? <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, they're fantastic, and, and I'm so grateful to them. They, they, they just hosted all of us for several days while we got this in, in, in the bank kind of thing. Yeah. That's what they'll, they'll find on there, those two two songs. Yeah. So uh, that, uh, that one you just scrolled at, the pink one there, that was the picture taken at one of the Edmonton Women of Song events. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I do recall. Is it seven or so of you ladies that Originally did that? Originally, seven, yeah. Yeah, there's seven did it for a few years. And uh, uh, yeah, that was uh, quite the quite the event there. Uh, I think it was annual. And uh, so so videos wise, I, I like to, uh, again, just uh, inject a uh, video here for our viewers. Uh, which one would you like me to play first, Lynn? You just take your pick. But before you do, I just want to say they'll also find information about my band members there, whom I love to be. You bet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we saw some of that scrolling by there as well. And we mentioned their name in the intro there. So, you know, I'm just going to pick uh, the top one here, which happens to say bottom of the bottle. Is oh. that a okay one to, to share? Yep. yep. Okay. So here's one just on the website. Uh, and hopefully I can make it larger. And give me a second here to, to manage the volume. Give me a second. And uh, uh, when I do play it, make sure, let me know if, if you can hear it. And if you can't, I'll fix it. Lynn? I drink away I my sorrow, yeah. hide this pain from my brain. Say goodbye to my tomorrow. When I think it's over, this hurting and this 
Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> How lucky am I to be able to Yeah. Those musicians, I'm telling you. Awesome. First, ah, every time I hear Percy's guitar, it's just like, guys, I'm... Yeah. Percy was, on, <laughs> Percy was on here a month and a bit ago, and uh, it was wonderful hearing uh, his stories and all of the musical bands and journeys that he's uh, been through and continue to, uh, to, to be through. Yeah, that's yeah. very good. I watched his in some, yeah. of, some of that wee tiny bit of downtime that I have. I watched his interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's great. So that's the uh, the Lin Schwill band, and uh, uh, obviously you have big plans for the band going forward. Uh, unfortunately, uh, pause a little bit by COVID here. Any idea when you might be rehearsing again, my friend, uh, and ready for getting um, back to? I didn't even attempt to get us together over the summer because it, every summer everybody's just off in too many different directions. Right, um, right. So likely in the fall is where things yeah. will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah probably good timing. It's, it's, it's old age. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's the what we call the powerful pause. In Toastmaster, yeah, yeah. that would be called the powerful pause. You pause until people guess what it is that you're going to say, and then you move on. <laughs> so, oh, as far as plans for the band, we got back from Memphis at the very beginning of February. And mid-February, we did the Edmonton Winter Blues Festival, and it was probably the band's best performance to date, in my opinion. Because we came back with everything we took from Memphis and learned and saw and um, tried to apply when we did our next performance and we were just on fire it just felt so high energy and so good like felt good and and then boom COVID hit it was like we were just climbing and it's just <laughs> yeah. so it would appear that uh, Memphis was good for you guys it was it yeah. was we came back different musicians yeah, yeah. Tell us more. Tell us more from your vantage point. Uh, others might see it differently, but from your vantage point, uh, tell us sort of key things that stuck up about Memphis and about that particular, again, competing for the International Blues Challenge, representing Edmonton. Tell us a bit more about that. Okay. Um, first off, they're so used to having people from all over the world there that, that the hospitality was off the charts. We were treated so, so respectfully and so kindly. Um, that's the first thing I noticed was just how hospitable everybody was and friendly and, and that Southern hospitality, is, it's true. Then the second thing we noticed was when we went to our first um, live music, I think there were jams or showcases or something we went to first and the level of musicianship <laughs> is just like, it's just well people don't send their worst there right so mm -hmm. it was mind-blowing and there was so much going on you just couldn't get to everybody all at once it was like i wish they had a month of it not a week because you just i just couldn't get enough in that week and i missed people i wanted to see and and the energy the energy is off the charts the whole week it's just go 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 and crowds every club was full and and appreciative. It didn't matter who played what or what they played. And there were so many different styles of music there. It didn't matter who or what. The crowd was so appreciative. In other words, music is life there. Yes. Yeah. Music yeah. is life. Life is music. And it's appreciated uh, in all its forms. Yeah. Hospitality. So, you know, the name, the city, the, the location didn't become famous, world famous for no reason. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And then there's the, that sense of, 
when you're standing on certain stages thinking to yourself like, wow, this is, this is like a famous stage. It's been here for a long time. And the feet, the souls that have stood on this stage, and here I am. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty, pretty incredible. Going to have to pinch yourself once in a while there. I, I still, I'm still in awe of everything we saw there and, and got, we're blessed to be able to do. On that note, thank you to the Edmonton Blue Society for all their support. And thank you to everybody, everybody who either came or supported in any way, shape, or form our fundraiser to be able to go there. Yeah. Very you know, I hear again and again that Edmonton is quite the hotbed for music and live music. And uh, uh, I'm proud to, uh, to, uh, to know that. And I'm proud and, and grateful to have that in Edmonton. And uh, COVID and all, we're going to resume again with that tradition there of, again, supporting live music and, and uh, uh, really creating that, uh, that music center that, that we all um, are proud of, I think. Yeah. Uh, tell us, um, we're going to visit some of these photos more closely, but as the photos flash by, do you have a story to share before I uh, that share? Was, okay. That is Karen. And uh -huh. she, oh, and that one too. That one. <laughs> I can't even keep up with them all. Um, that was the band winning. That was the band winning um, the local competition for the Blues uh, Challenge. And it was every single person was a part of that award. That's why I insisted everybody had a hand on it when we took the picture. Yeah. Now let me go to that, that photo. Pardon me? Let me get back to that photo. Which one was that? Right there. Okay. Let me uh, go there. Because it wasn't a solo effort. I didn't win that award. We won that award. Everybody had an equal part in it. And it, so I told them all, like, everybody hold the award, we're getting a picture, so. Uh, let's uh, make sure people know the name to the faces here. So go ahead and sure. tell us the name of each one of these individuals here. Okay, starting on, I guess. The left, where I'm pointing my mouse, you can probably see okay. my mouse. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that is Rooster Davis, AKA David Aid. Um, he is the keyboard player, phenomenal keyboard player. Um, but I think that everyone in the band is phenomenal. <laughs> um, Percy Marshall next to him. I absolutely worship Percy Marshall. Uh, Greg Pretty stepped up, learned the music, not on a lot of notice, um, did a fantastic job. Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, Rosemary Seaver added saxophone to the band. That added a nice new little flavor that we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. um, and she's real good eye candy. She dresses really nice and, and, and take some of the focus off me, which I really like. <laughs> 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 and next to me is um, Jeff Bartlett. And Jeff and I and Percy are the original family members of the Lynchville Band. Mm -hmm. Hey, there is a comment from Mr. Gordon Graschuk, who- uh, Hi, Gordon. Yeah, as you know, Gordon has been uh, the uh, as an organ player for the Edmonton Oilers, uh, you know, that the uh, organ sound that you would hear well that's that's gordon so gordon says that you can probably read it uh, on screen there hey he says uh yeah <laughs> the first rehearsal of the scratch i remember that too gordon i remember that too i i don't recall the neighbors coming out to hear me probably would have crawled into my little shell and been all self-conscious if i'd have known <laughs> <laughs> but we had fun we had a lot of fun, that was fun. yeah gordon neighbors... also off the charts talented we have yeah. so much talent in this city. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, uh, Al, um, I don't know how to pronounce the last name, but you probably know how to pronounce that last name better than I. I, I should. He, <laughs> I, I should. He's, I got him. <laughs> and I still don't pronounce it quite right. Al, firm, yes, sir, I think it is. There you go. How did I do, Al? Al yeah. There you go. Well, he has a he has a heart there for you, my friend. So he already provided the heart. So awesome. even if you uh, were a little bit off on pronunciation, the the love is there. Gordon chimed back in again here and said that that was a blast. It was, yeah. Yeah. So we're going to continue on the photos, but maybe uh, before we uh, continue with that, I'm going to play another video on your website. But before I play it, uh, maybe have you tell a bit of a story about the, the next video that just happens to be on your website. I'm just going to uh, kind of just scroll down on it here. So uh, uh, we'll bring it in again here and uh, let's kind of uh, go back to uh, the trusty website here and uh, tell me which one to hit play my friend. 
Um, okay, so this is Hound Dog. Oh, I'm pointing as if you can see my screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one that says only but a goodie. The one that, okay, yeah. Hound, yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. That is Hound Dog. So that's what Gordon was just talking about. Um, okay. A, a different band. This was with Joey DeMarco, um, uh, Don Muir, who was a keyboard player for Dutch Mason mm -hmm. at the time, and Ray Montana on guitar, and John Gray on, on bass. Mm -hmm. so, I will quick play. Let me know if you can hear the sound.
so a couple of interesting things about that video. In the middle of it, I almost tripped over the drums and <laughs> almost, but I just mm -hmm. knocked over the mic. So yeah. everything, everything with Joey was such a learning experience for me. And and Joey moved down east. And I keep bugging him, come back out west, man, come back out west, because I can't wait to share a stage with him again. To, yeah. A, um, he's such an amazing drummer, so amazing. And, and B, because yeah. I show him how far I've come, how much I've grown. Um, yeah. It's yeah. Really so much more of an enjoyable experience now. Joey uh, DeMarco, right? Yes. Yes, yes. Hey, there's a couple of comments that came in while we were playing the video. I, I, I showed them, but I wanted to uh, show it to you again here. Michelle says she loves hearing Hound Dog. So that was a treat for you, Michelle. We did it just for you, my friend. And then uh, Jackie uh, chimed in here. And says, yeah, uh, yeah, I saw that yeah. one. Yeah, thank yeah, you, Jackie. Yeah, that's wonderful. She uh, missed seeing you perform. And then, of course, Al. Um, uh, Turned in again here and uh, yeah, yeah. And then of course, Michelle says, awesome uh, is the version that um, <laughs> Elvis heard and, and did his cover. <laughs> I didn't know that, that's cool. There you go. So um, awesome. wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, that's, uh, that's awesome <laughs> music. Yeah. As we uh, resume, maybe looking at the photos as a guide to kind of bring up the stories that you might want to share. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. But before I do that, uh, I want to ask you a, a different question. And that question is, um, if there was a highlight in your whole music career, is there a story that you can tell that 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 sort of demonstrate that or, or that that highlights that? Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of highlights, but what's top of mind yeah. do you think about a highlight? Um, hmm. <laughs> so many. Uh, I'd have to say, first off, being asked on stage by Tommy, just I didn't see it coming and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, the Blues Cruise, of course. Um, mm -hmm. That is a, an experience I will never, never, never forget. I'm so grateful for. Thank you, Dave and Karen. They got married. Uh, on the cruise. They met on the cruise and they got mm -hmm. married on the cruise. So Dave Allen is, is he's been such an intense fan. Mm -hmm. And this is the thing about this music thing that I do. I get to meet so many people and some of the people I meet end up being these lifelong friends. Mm -hmm. um, they start out as fans and end up as, as like friends. And Dave Allen is one of those people. He's mm -hmm. been a supporter from day one. Mm -hmm. um, and insisted I was going to be singing at his wedding on the cruise. And it did come to fruition. So. As a man of vision and execution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that was a highlight. Also, I think have to, I'd have to say another highlight was, um, I want to give uh, props to Rick Estrin. Um, Rick Estrin, I've seen him a few times here in Edmonton. Um, we, we have... Um, he graciously donated signed harmonicas for the fundraiser when I was raising funds to get my oral situation dealt with. Mm -hmm. And and I'm so grateful for that. And he also had his band sign um, a guitar. I don't even know who won that guitar. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say thank you. He, he says happy birthday every year to me on my birthday and um, checks in sees how, to see how I'm doing. His, his donations. And, and everything that Dave Allen and Carol Tomaski, everything that everybody did to raise funds for me to get my health um, under control. I, thank you. Thank you. This is what I want you to remind me about. Thank you. I'm taking this opportunity to publicly thank every single person. You will never, I'm going to get choked. You will never know how grateful I am. Mm -hmm. It's enabled me to keep singing. I can remember singing on stage. This is not one of the highlights. I can remember singing on stage when I had five, five teeth left in my mouth. Mm -hmm. But I refused to not sing. I was going to sing, teeth or no teeth. Um, so what it is, can we? Can I segue into this? Um, you bet. Uh, I'm going to show the photo as well um, soon. Yeah, please do. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I suffered for years and years and years with really severe dental decay. I spent thousands of dollars on dentists. I even got a lecture from one dentist on, on how I should have been done better because I just replaced that teeth, those teeth last year and, mm -hmm. and I'll never forget that guy. Anyway, um, turns out um, I was diagnosed with Sjogren's disease and Sjogren's disease 
attack, it's an autoimmune disease that attacks your moisture producing glands. So your eyes are very, very dry. Sometimes I've missed work a couple times because my eyes were so dry, they swole shut and I could not see to even drive. Um, very, very dry mouth. And because of that severe dry mouth, you get dental decay. Saliva is what breaks down bacteria and protects your teeth. I didn't have any. Still don't. That's why you'll see me doing this every 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And when I get nervous, it, it's un ridiculously severe. So anyway, I was diagnosed with this disease. It affects so many Canadians. There are so many people out there who aren't even aware they have it. If you have dry eyes and severe dry mouth, you might want to ask your doctor to do a, a blood test for Sjogren's. Mm. It can affect your internal organs. I, the two close calls I had at the emergency ward were really bad kidney infections. Um, one, I ended up um, in the hospital for 24 hours on a watch because I let it go so far. And they kind of asked me why I waited so long to come in. And I said, I thought I had the flu. I had really high fever and aches and pains, and I thought I had the flu. And I guess 10 days later, when it didn't go away, <laughs> I figured I should go to the hospital. Anyway, that's what Sjogren's does. It can affect your lungs. It can affect so many different things. Yeah, um, let's uh, let's show our viewer a uh, uh, that photo there. So um, just just a uh, fair warning to our viewer there. This this photo is uh, definitely uh, you know. Uh, a very uh, extreme sort of health condition here that uh, we want to show you a bit of a bit before and after. So here's the before and then the after would be after you've done your restorative uh, surgery and all of that, right? So here we go. Okay, so that is an abscess. And I can remember in one month, I had an abscess on this side, one on that side, up here, and one up here. Mm -hmm. In yeah. one month. In one wow. I spat out three teeth and I remember just, just crying yeah. so hard when I spat out the third one because it just seemed like there was no end to it. Right, right. But uh, as we know, there was an end to it and uh, thankful uh, to a lot of people who in the community has chimed in to, uh, to help and to assist and to encourage you. And here's the after, my friend, I, yeah. I presume. That, yes, that, oh. <laughs> <laughs> brings me joy. <laughs> just, I could smile, I could sing, I could eat, I could actually eat raw vegetables and, and meat and stuff that I just couldn't eat before. Mm -hmm. and it feels so much better. I mm -hmm. mean, everybody who contributed to my journey, um, uh, you helped save a life, really. Yeah. Well, thank you again, folks, uh, the generous folks of Edmonton and uh, surrounding area. And uh, Can I just uh, say one more thing on, in regards to this? Mm -hmm. That is Dr. Sumar's work from Vivid Dental. Mm -hmm. and, and thank you so much to Dr. Dabrowski, who I, the, like I said, I can't even express how deeply grateful I am to these people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing that uh, touching story of, um, uh, of course, uh, challenge and then, of course, be able to overcome it with the help of friends, as they say. I get by with a little help of my friends, I heard somewhere on some lyrics somewhere. <laughs> All right. So thank you for sharing that, uh, Lynn. Just a quick question, Lynn. Could you double check for me if you go into that gear icon we spoke about earlier towards the bottom? Are you on the 720 there, my friend? Uh, let me just go ahead and pull up the, your uh, site here again here. Uh, I would like to also maybe share another um, uh, video from uh, uh, maybe from your YouTube channel this time around, my friend. Uh, th there's a whole Lynn Trill band here that's uh, uh, actually I happen to be looking at uh, Edmonton Blue Society. Now, this here, uh, I don't know, th th this uh, particular video, would you like me to show this one, Lynn? It says uh, Lynn Trill band, and it was from uh, 2019, and it was posted by uh, the Edmonton Blues Society. Yes, this was at the um, Blues Challenge the year before, mm -hmm. um, and that was a very, very close call that year. We we lost by less than a point to the first place winner. And uh, but this is at the semifinals, mm -hmm. and and I think this one maybe wasn't our our, our like we weren't on 
our A game that night because everybody was so nervous. It was our first our first sort of kick at the cat. So yeah, yeah, no, we can actually uh, look at the, now. I'm trying to remember. Do you have a YouTube channel or I know you have a Facebook page, right? I do. Um, <laughs> Let me bring an old person comment. I have a YouTube channel, but I've forgotten the, face, uh, the password and I've got it in, in probably two years. <laughs> it will come back to you. But uh, for the meantime, well, I'm going to bring up your Facebook uh, channel then. So here is uh, the Facebook thing, right? And um, you probably have some videos on there as well that I could possibly share as well, perhaps, right? I, yeah, I probably do. Yeah. So um, let me just uh, prep for that because what happened is I have this. Uh, this thing where uh, I was trying to manage the feedback uh, there. So let me now unmute this. And uh, so this is your um, Facebook page. And you know viewers can see pictures and photo videos and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so when it comes to videos, I'm just going to go and, and look at maybe some of the videos. And, and no pressure, but if there's any video here that you'd like us to uh, to share or, or you know kind of play for our viewers, I'd be happy to do that. It looks like there's some from uh, uh, a little while ago, um, or we can just look at the uh, the page and, and get people to maybe visit it and, and check it out for themselves, if that's better. It's either or. Okay, cool, cool. Well, okay. What I like to do is um, resume our conversation using the photos there, my friend. Uh, you told some story about some of the photos, and I want to bring out more stories that are uh, guided by the some more photos here. So let me uh, bring back. Uh, those photos and uh, we're gonna talk about them okay but but before we go there i asked for a, a highlight uh, in music and, and you shared that uh, do you have a low light uh, like a low point in music that oh. you have a story to share where yeah. that was a low point where you know it's really etched a mark in your mind about um, do you have one like that you could share before i bring the photos back up many <laughs> three instantly popped into my head the first yeah. and the most recent one um, and it was in Memphis, it was at our, our showcase, so, um, which is kind of like our practice run before the competition really started. And thank goodness they have that because we, we can't, you know, get some of the kinks out and, and the nerves. So the, our first performance, um, we had worked out the arrangement, worked out the arrangement, worked out the arrangement. And I was to come in after um, two rotations of the saxophone solo which was really really good and i didn't i waited one rotation and walked right over top the saxophone solo mm -hmm. and i i feel really really bad for that because it was rosemary Seaver and she worked so hard um she worked so hard on making it perfect and i kind of wrecked it mm -hmm. and i feel bad for that so rosemary i love you i'm sorry <laughs> but everything is a learning experience <laughs> The humanity um, of the humanity of live music. Yeah. So I mean, I've done this for a while now, and I'm, I'm I still make mistakes, and I'm sure everybody does. Mm -hmm. So that was the most recent. Um, the one, the other one that comes to mind um, was going way way back. Can you, can just, did I lose a? Yeah. Oh no, they're just getting too comfy here. Yeah. See. Uh, the ears, the ear uh, phones has now become an extension of you. You don't even feel it in there anymore. <laughs> there we go. Okay. There you are. And yeah. um, this one goes way back. And it was when I first started out, I was with Joey DeMarco. Mm -hmm. Some really top-notch musicians. Joey always put together a, a real high-level band. Mm -hmm. And we did the Blues Can in Calgary. Yeah. And the feedback I got from that performance, I thought... Uh, the crowd really liked it, mm -hmm. but in hindsight, the feedback I got from that was absolutely brutal, and it ripped my soul right out of my body. It was so brutal. Yeah. But it was the single most valuable lesson I ever learned in my entire career. Right, right. Everything that this person said, it was um, someone, someone from Calgary at the club. Everything this person said had a grain of truth to it. Not even a grain, it had like a, a wall of truth to it. <laughs> and all the things that were said, even though it hurt me and hurt me for a long time, I really took that and used it to improve. Um, so it was, you know, it was, it was, they were fair comments. Yeah. Well, thank you. Tremendously. 
Thank you for sharing that. Uh, that is almost a, well, definitely is a motivational moment there. You and I are both into mot motivational stuff uh, ourselves. Yeah. And uh, whenever we, we have a story of really the, the low point that became, in fact, uh, a turning point is always exciting to hear about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, our friend, uh, Greg Lasky, still hanging on here and still uh, sort of commenting, says, query for Lynn, uh, do you have a six-year-old uh, reminiscence on your Facebook page? What did you learn back then and how are things now? So so how have things evolved? Uh, let's say if you look back six years, what are... Okay, well, that would, that would be an example, what, um, just how I was as, as a performer. Mm -hmm. um, and also, six years ago was kind of the beginning of the decline of the economy here. Mm -hmm. um, and everything that I've worked for so hard in college, in university, the degree I worked so hard to get. Um, the career I kind of moved into was working for um, engineers who built pipelines. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. But you can well imagine that career kind of changed. Yeah. Um, so what have I learned? I've learned that you just evolve, you change, you, you adapt and you grow. So I now work in new home sales for Bedrock Homes. I love the work, absolutely love it. I get to go to these fancy new homes every day and I meet people, I get to talk to people. Um, I, I, I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, what might have been more administrative of a job in nature is now a very social kind of a job is what I'm yeah. hearing, which is good. It's going to light you up more than than sitting at the desk doing, you know, uh, what I call desk duties, for lack of a better term. That's very well articulated. That's exactly what, what I was trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I can imagine there'll be... With, with, one day when when you have a big you know uh was it open house party you can be the uh the oh, band that that satisfy that for your company and your clients there my friend we've talked about that too yes we have we've talked about doing a block party yeah yeah cool well wonderful thank you greg and thank you folks for keep chiming in we love to hear more from you so keep them coming we're going to hang around for a bit longer you don't have a business meeting to go to i'm okay too from my end so if you're okay if you're having fun oh. my friend we'll continue for a bit i'm loving this we're talking about me what what, what makes me happier <laughs> <laughs> there you go um so tell us um as you think about uh so i'm going to share some more photos okay uh by the way, folks, uh, I disappear not because I'm camera shy. I disappear just to feature the photos and the appropriate things here. So I'm going to disappear again and I'm going to bring in the uh, photo. Yeah. And um, oh, let, let's see that cup, uh, Lynn. Let's take, have a uh, up close. OK, do you know what song that is that the music can you do? Do you read enough music to know what song that is? <laughs> do you know what? I could if I had a week of downtime, I could note by note by note figure out this song. Yeah, I haven't got to it yet. My daughter just bought me this online. Wasn't that sweet of her? <laughs> cool, very cool. I got to get me one of those because all I got is this this boring, you know. I think where did we get it? We, this boring thing from Canadian Tire <laughs> is all I got, my friend. Right? Yeah. They come with guitars and keyboards, saxophones, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. So uh, as you look at this photo, my friend. Uh, actually, we've been through this one, so we're going to go to the next one. So as you look at this photo, um, any story or sentiment, I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. Um, yeah, tell us what comes to mind. He's a, a phenomenal bass player and um, a very, very nice man. One of, the, one of the first people I was able to play with when I was learning how to perform with a live band. Um, and he's so gracious and encouraging and supportive. So, And, and he was also playing in um, Memphis when we were there. Yeah. And I see him in Calgary every now and then. And he's in Edmonton quite often too, if I yeah. uh, recall. Yeah. The very first time I met him was at Blues on White. And yeah. the thing that stood out for me was you'll see the shirt with the no sleeves. Yeah. Um, the, the, that, before I even met him, I was watching him play thinking, man, that guy's got some pipes on. <laughs> yeah. Very well liked and respected uh, for what he does. Oh, very much so. Very much so. Very, very humble. Just, you know, it, it's like, it's like sort of the higher these people seem to get in their level of musicianship, the more humble they get. And, you know, that's what I strive for. I, I want to be that, that person. In other words, they feel like they don't feel like they have something to prove anymore. Yeah. 
Right. When you early on in your quote unquote career, you have this chip on your shoulder of wanting to prove something, and and maybe it's fair game back then, but uh, most well, people get thicker too as time goes on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most people, as they grow in their uh, career and their profession, and even just their life, uh, start to mellow out a bit and say, you know what, it's, it's bigger than this career. It really is about the, the humanity of it, the relationship with people. So I think all of that tends to uh, work itself in in the latter career. Likely. This photo is very special, the one, one back. Mm -hmm. um, that's Mikey. He's the owner of Mikey's on 12th in Calgary. Um, I first met Mikey when it was when he had Mikey's juke joint still. And he's he, he was in Memphis when we were in Memphis. And so it was kind of like, it was great because I, I knew some people while we went down there, some friends. I know the name of the place, but I don't know uh, which one is Mikey. The middle one. Okay, cool. And the one beside him is my number one fan turned lifelong friend, Dave Allen. Wonderful. Dave my, such a supporter of all music. This, this is special too. I didn't get to see her this year. Um, she is my co-host in the Beaumont Blues and Roots Festival Musicians Tent. We're the host there. And that's Michelle. And Michelle and I have seen each other once a year, every year in that tent. And we never got to see each other this year. There so you go. Thank you, Michelle. A shout out to Jeremy Cornell and, and, and crew yeah. over there who puts on a fantastic festival every year for the last number of years. Unfortunately, not this year due to COVID, but uh, I'm sure they will come back stronger next year than even before because they will have all those pent up energy and, and, and ideas as well. Yeah. Last year, I had a commitment in Calgary the weekend of the festival. That was the first time I've missed hosting since the day it started. Mm -hmm. um, but Michelle was there to man the post, and then of course this year COVID. So I'll be really ready for a Beaumont Blues and Roots Festival fix next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is Karen, the wife of Dave Allen, who uh, the other half of the couple that got or the other half of Dave and Karen who got married on the Blues Cruise. You know, I think I know another Dave and Karen. Uh, our music community, if I if I'm not mistaken, is Dave and Karen as well, but it's a different uh, Dave and Karen, and they're they're in their uh, you know elder years and whatnot. But they they really support music in a big way. They go to uh, so I think that it's certainly Dave, and I think it's Dave and Karen as well. So what is it with this Dave and Karen combination that has so much support for the people around them? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And then again. Yeah. Blues Challenge here in Edmonton. Yeah, we, we talked about that photo before. Very awesome group. There we got two, four, six. That's a big band these days. It was, yeah. It was. We had, we had a pretty small stage too. Uh, oh, no, we didn't actually. It was not bad. Mm -hmm. some, of the, some of the jams we went to. Yeah. So this is the official photo. Every band who um, represented their Blue Society had to have this official photo, like the, mm -hmm. the banner on the bottom. Yeah. This was ours, and that was the Rocco Macri uh, photo. Yeah. Rocco rocks. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Thank you, Rocco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think I'm going to do this. Um, I, I, I think mm -hmm. I know how to spell his name correctly. So tell me if I'm correct. Um, well, I'm going to be a little bit, um, maybe I'm going to, um, is it uh, M-A-R-C-I or? C R I R O C M A C R I M M A R or no? No, M A C R I. Okay. Perfect. Um, let me know. Is that the right uh, spelling? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, there might be two C's. Is there? Two? No, that, there's okay. There's two C's there. Um, but I didn't uh, me. I know that. Sorry, I keep scratching because I've got. Mosquito bites. Yeah, yeah. You are enjoying the summer kind of things there, hey? No, yeah. I got it correct. Summer things are enjoying me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 they're enjoying you. It's all perspective, right? <laughs> so we got the name right. So uh, shout out to Rocco, who uh, not only is a great photographer, but also a, uh, a fantastic musician and guitar player and, uh, and all that. Yeah, wonderful human being. And he happens to be in Sherwood Park where I live as well. So he's another Sherwood Park uh, residence. Yeah. Ah, Tom Cochran. This photo, <laughs> I had no idea, but my older brother is a huge Tom Cochran fan. And he saw this on my Facebook and I got this message, this, this panicked message. 
is that Tom Cochran? Is that real? Is that Photoshop? Is that this? Is that like he couldn't believe? And then and now he keeps reposting this picture every now and then on Facebook on his <laughs> page, um, and it makes me laugh. So this this picture was taken in the green room at the Rock Fest. So there was one year when the uh, long-standing green room hostess could not could not um, be there that year, and so yeah. and so another lady and I took over the the duties that year because of my experience at the Beaumont Festival. And yeah. we decorated up the green room and we had such a good time. So this is a photo of me and, top, uh, me and Tom Crawford. And we also got to meet Prism and Trooper and Chilliwack, I think it was Chilliwack, I can't remember. Yeah. So just so much fun. I've met so many people and, and I've had such a rich decade. Like, I have a great life. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, great lives don't just happen. You, you've done some work to make it through some tough times. And uh, through that, you've also prepared yourself. Uh, as they say, you know, luck is more likely to happen when we're prepared, right? And it sounds <laughs> like you have prepared yourself for all this great life that you're referring to, my friend. I just would rather be happy than not. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good way to go. Good way to go. Uh, Mr. Percy Marshall, the fantastic, legendary Percy Marshall, who also was on this show uh, a few uh, weeks back. Uh, he said, yeah. Dave and Karen uh, uh, Canteen. So I was right about Dave yes. and Ka I Karen. I was Dave and Karen as well. Look at that. Yeah. And they, uh, uh, they're, they're, I think uh, they're, I would guess they're in the 70s kind of, um, you know, and they just really active in supporting all of the local musicians. I would see them at various uh, jams yeah. and performances. They are just probably the most, uh, you know, supportive, uh, you know, people in the music uh, scene here. So Dave and Karen. Yeah, I was correct. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's cool. Thanks, Percy. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us about this next photo. Oh, by the way, I must reiterate what I heard you said earlier. Did I hear correctly that uh, Mr. Tom Cochran actually featured this photo not once, but multiple times over the years uh, on his own page as in no. something that he's proud of? No, uh, my brother, my brother did. Oh, I see. I I, I heard that wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, it's my brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so lucky to have Tom Rico. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you never know. You never know. So, um, <laughs> hey, but you know what, <laughs> Mr. Cochran, if you're watching this show, you can make that happen, my friend. You can go ahead and make it happen. My mistaken interpretation, you can make it reality. You're, you're a famous guy. You can do whatever you want. So, yeah, post this photo on your face on fa your page a few times, and uh, that would make that come true. <laughs> He's a very nice man. Again, another very humble. Well, I guess maybe my it's me. Maybe I. I mean, he is humble, but I. I thought. I'm not surprised. They are just human beings, right? But they're they're really nice, good human beings. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Alan Quilly chimed in again with a quote here: "Fortune favors the well prepared." There you go. <laughs> Sounds like a quote from uh, Pastor, or if I don't, I don't know if I say his name correctly, but anyway. Um, and fortune is subjective. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so uh, thank you folks for your continued comment and encouragement and uh, questions and whatever have you. Keep them coming, folks. Keep them coming. So so Lynn, uh, the next photo, tell us the story that comes with this one. Oh, this is a good time. <laughs> this is always a good time. Um, see what I mean? I meet the greatest people. So that's Sue Kozak. That is Steve Kozak's wife um, on one side of me. And on the other side is Deb Power from Calgary. Uh, let, let me uh, clarify, which which one is which? So Dead Powers is, the, the, the one where your cursor is now is Sue Kozak. Mm -hmm. Hi Sue. And the one on the other side of me is Dead Powers from Calgary. She's originally from the East Coast. Right. And this was at the After Jam at one of the Edmonton Blues Festivals. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we were laughing and giggling and having so much fun. I just have, there's such fantastic people. And that jam has this aura of just, relaxed fun everybody there everybody's on a level playing field and and it's wall to wall people the, the atmosphere is just party and joy and and uh that's what this photo was taken from and i ended up um co-writing one of the songs on my website if you want to play that with deb in the ranch sweater there we co-wrote um um i can't even think of it right now 
the other one that's on <laughs> the other video that's on the yeah. website. Yeah. So, so tell us, I have a question, my friend. Uh, I, I think I know the answer, but uh, is blues where it's at for you? You discovered the blues a number of years ago and have you uh, sang many other songs in other genre beyond blues uh, in any regular frequency or is it pretty much blues? Well, I started out um, right after my divorce, I, because I'd shelved singing for so many, many, many years. I joined the karaoke contest across the mall, the street, the mall across the street from my house. Mm -hmm. And I did terrible, um, but I, the host kind of took me under his wing and taught me mic control and how to work a crowd with absolutely zero band behind you. So you're the only focus of attention. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of taught me a lot. Mm -hmm. And I was doing country back then. And I still love country. You never forget your first love. But I did country for quite a while and did a lot of vocal contests and won all kinds of things, Western Canadian Women's Championship and um, Karaoke CMT Star, that whatever, Karaoke Star, all kinds of contests, like Big Valley, I went out to Big Valley four or five times, I ended up hosting the competition at the Big Valley once, uh, twice, and so let me let me just chime in. I think because of your background and interest and and and, and uh, discipline and and uh, uh, kind of honing this public speaking <laughs> side of your. Go back one. Oh, it, it was just uh, flying through there. Sorry. Go back. You have to hold that picture. We'll talk about that in a second. Which one? No, no the other one. No, the other way. One more. There, that one. Right. Okay, so sorry, carry on. I interrupted you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was saying that because of your background and interest in, 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 in public speaking, I think that dovetail well with the uh, music performance and performer. Uh, that's probably explains uh, many sort of hosting roles that you had over the years with the music scenes, right? I mean, those two really sort of uh, uh, complement well, I think. Yes, very much so. I never regretted a day of taking Toastmasters. It did nothing but improve uh, my speaking. I just didn't... Uh... <laughs> In Toastmasters, we count the uhs and the ands and the crutch words, and, and you become very aware of your crutch words when you join Toastmasters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this photo, I want to talk about this photo. If you can make that a little bigger and just sort of zoom in on my face. Do you see my eyes? This is on the cruise. This is on the blues cruise. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why I do not smoke marijuana. <laughs> look at that face. I can't even look up my eyes. Yes, so that, that is why I do not smoke marijuana. <laughs> I just don't function. Anyway, this person I'm, I'm uh, pointing at, he was third place winner in, in American Idol. And he was performing on the ship. So. Yeah. That's why that, we can move on from that photo now. I just wanted to show everyone the prime example of why Lynch World does not smoke marijuana. Uh, that implies that it happened once in a while. <laughs> um, once or twice or maybe, maybe a handful of times. But each time I pretty much look like that and function like that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. so it doesn't take long before you realize, you know. Yeah. Perhaps this is not your vice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So tell us about this one here. You got some attitude being displayed there at the Beaumont something or other. Oh, no, this is having sunglasses on that I couldn't see out of. <laughs> and um, uh, Brian Zahradnik, I want to mention him as well. Another fantastic human being and a generous, generous photographer. He's taken many of the photos that I use on my Facebook page over the years. I, I miss him. I haven't seen him for so long. Him and his wife, um, again, standard faces in the crowd. I, I haven't seen them for a while and I really miss them. But this is one of his photos. He must have mentioned me or called me or something and I had to take my glasses off to see um, who was whatever. And he took this picture. Yeah. I learned from my previous one. I, I started a Facebook uh, a page beside here and I looked him up so I didn't have to guess the spelling. Oh, very well done. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm a learner. I can learn these things. Yeah. So that is one of Brian's photos. And he took many over the years. 
This is where I grew up. This is my humble beginning. Mm. The farmhouse that I grew up in was pink stucco. It was very, very old, very small. And I lived, I grew up in it and I lived there until I was 19. And shortly after I moved out, it was torn down. That's how old it was. Or it became a barn first and then it was torn down. But yeah. Wait. The shell of it is still out on the acreage. And I go out there and drive past it every now and then just for nostalgic yeah. reminiscing. I'll tell you a quick story. When I came to Canada back in January of 1983, I was in my teens there. And the first job I got was uh, on a part time, you know, while I was going to school, was actually on a farm, picking rocks and lifting hails, uh, bales and haze and whatnot. I tell you, with the sun beating down directly and you, you're doing that kind of work, very heavy lifting. Um, it clarified for me that I was not good at uh, farm work. Uh, I was going to have to do something else because uh, that's hard work. It's funny, I, I've got to tell you this, it is hard work, first off, but my brother left the farm when he was 16 and I had to take over his chores, mm -hmm. which was, we had 20 head of cattle and I had to pull water from a 10 gallon pail from a 40 foot well every morning, water all 20 head of cattle, and then when they finished drinking, fill the trough before I went to school, and then again when I got home from school, clean the barns, help fix, fix fences, shovel the driveways, you name it, it was just, we were... It was a lot of work, but a 10 gallon pail full of water from a 40 foot well until you've watered endlessly. It, it took about an hour every morning and an hour every night. I ended up in high school looking like the female Schwarzenegger. I had like, I was a V. <laughs> <laughs> and my brother came home one time to visit. And if you drop a pail full of water and it slithers all the way to the bottom of the well, hits the water down there, it'll knock the bottom out of the pail. Mm -hmm. So I was always very conscious of not doing that because my grandmother would get really upset if I did that. So I was pulling water. My brother came to visit one day. And as I'm pulling water, he's poking me in the ribs mm. while I have a pail full of water. Mm -hmm. Finally, I got mad. I couldn't stand it anymore. I let the pails slither down, hit the bottom of the well. It didn't break, thank goodness. I got my brother on the ground and pounded him in the same spot with the point of my knuckles over and over and over and over and over. I was so mad. So he got up and it didn't hurt. These guys are tough, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And went into the house and told my grandmother, because she told me this. He came into the house going, geez, Lenny's gotten kind of tough since I left. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, people grow, uh, you know, yeah. mentally and physically and otherwise, if they work at it, they grow, right? And now, uh, now when he, and he called me Nanu, 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 and now when he does it, it's, a, it's almost a term of endearment. Yeah, you know, um, that, that story when you were talking about, you know, um, doing it again and again, th this term came to mind because having lived in a farming community for about seven years in Westlock, Alberta, when I came to Canada oh, nice. and, uh, you know, spending time with folks, uh, there's a term that flashed back to my mind is this Charlie horse. Does that, does that <laughs> ring a bell? <laughs> is that what you were giving him a Charlie horse? <laughs> well, and the animals I grew up with, my grandmother had two black labs and she called them Elvis and Presley. Mm. And, and our very next door neighbor was very close to us. So I imagine what they what, what they would think of this old woman coming out on her back porch at night yelling, Elvis Presley. <laughs> <laughs> I never forgot those two dogs. Many animals growing up. My aunt was a school teacher and uh, still lived on the farm with us. Yeah. And so she taught, or she named the animals. So we had Horatius Aloysius Abercrombie. They can never be, you know, Spot or Barney or anything. They had to have these massive names. Mm -hmm. um, Horatius Aloysius Abercrombie, we, uh, after to name my goat for me, my goat's name was Arachne Griselda because she had spider legs. Mm -hmm. um, and just ri not ridiculous, but amusing names like that, that I still remember. Mm -hmm. She was also a very strict grammar tutor. Mm -hmm. And she was constantly correcting my grammar growing up. And it frustrated me because I'd be saying something and she'd correct my grammar. Mm -hmm. And this one time I said something and she corrected my grammar. And I went, oh, I can't say nothing when you're around. And she went, that's a double negative. If you can't say nothing, <laughs> you can't. And, I was like, ah! <laughs> and you grew up to be a technical writer and a, 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 an author, you know, a person who, uh, journalist type of things, and uh, writing became your pursuit, my friend. A degree in professional writing. 
That's why I said, ask me to write something and I end up just, you know, mm. a, a, a windbag on the keyboard. It just mm. Yeah. Uh, we're we're uh, rounding the corner on uh, wrapping this up soon. I'd like to do a few things yet. The first thing I'd like to do is to ask you, uh, are there stories or insights or things that you want to share with our viewers on this segment here that we haven't gotten to yet, my friend? I I'm handing the wheel over to you to share whatever you like to. to uh, so what are your thoughts? Ah, oh, my thoughts are this, that it, nobody has a perfect life. We're always going to have obstacles and hurdles and challenges, low, low times and high times. So. The things I like to tell people are just ride it out. How, how, how glorious would spring be if we never had winter? You know, like just ride it out. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how low times get, it, the odds have it. It just means that you're at the bottom or the beginning of the next high. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things I like to tell people. Um, yeah. I, when you when you're on a roller coaster, don't get off. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, is there anything else I'd like to talk about? Uh, I have an animal, the animal right now who's on who's at his end of life. Mm -hmm. um, so I keep looking down, checking on him. Mm -hmm. So I will be posting pictures on my Facebook, a little collage. He he's he's a Halloween costume model. So he likes to think. So I'll be posting pictures of his various Halloween costumes after. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what else to talk about. I, I got a couple of things for you, but uh, I see Mr. Uh, Greg Lasky chimed in again here. He says, uh, we'll miss you until you uh, we see you perform uh, live again. Aw, thank you, Greg. I miss you guys too. I do. I miss performing so much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, a couple of things I like to uh, do. One is, um, as we have not sort of uh, paused on some of the latter photos, uh, feel free to pause or, or tell us any sort of uh, interesting things or, or um, stories or whatever from those photos. That's one thing. The other thing I was going to ask you is uh, at the end to kind of play us out, if there's a video on your website or elsewhere that you'd like us to queue up, and that could be a great way to uh, uh, to kind of cap off the um, the conversation there. So, so in terms of photos, uh, let me just see here. We were. Um, I'm just going to take myself out here again. I want to make sure that that since you send me these photos, um, we shared um, uh, all these photos here, and then we got to kind of uh, right about here, and uh, and then. Uh, I think this is where we sort of uh, stopped. Okay. Uh, tell us about this photo. Just uh, what comes this, to mind? This was at one of the Edmonton of Women or Edmonton Women of Song events, and this is where I met these people. Actually, I met these people at the after party of the Edmonton Blues Festival, and learned that this lady, or I can't even pointing, and you can't see the lady that the. Um, if you can move your curtain, nope, the other side. Yes, Heather. She started out a fan, and then I learned that she is a two or three time breast cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. So um, I would I would make sure she got to come to that event each year, and it ended up being such such a good friend. And I love her to pieces. Um, I got to go to her son's wedding. At least I think I did. <laughs> um, just a beautiful family, beautiful family, and I see her once or twice a year. And I love her to pieces. So this is what I wanted to say. Thank you to all the fans out there. It's one thing to talk about all the industry people, but the fans. Mm -hmm. um, I love, I truly love my fans. I love mm -hmm. them. They're, 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 they're quality people, and I just love them so much. Hey, I wanted to, I wanted to share briefly. Uh, you uh, might have gained a new fan here, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I could not turn on my fan because it's, uh, you know, it would make noise, but this was a way to oh, manage the heat. <laughs> there you go. There's your fan. There you go. Oh, how pretty too. <laughs> uh, somebody gifted two of these to me the other day. Uh, this and a purple one. So oh, anyway, very nice. Very nice. so I'm trying to make use of it. So uh, yeah, tell us more about these. Um, so what's next? Yeah, we, we went here and uh, I remember the lessons that you shared. Thou shall not. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. 
<laughs> yeah. This is a good one. This is the Dirt Road Angels. This mm -hmm. is a fun, fun trip. Again, down in Calgary. Some of my most memorable and fun trips have been to Calgary. Um, so this is the Dirt Road Angels. They were performing at the ranch, and I went down to surprise them. And then Dave in the background, best photobomb ever. Yes, that's Dave photobombing us. He uh, is, he lives in Calgary, him and Karen. So I went down to visit my, my two friends who I grew up with on the farm who also live in Calgary. And I let Dave and Karen know that I was going to be going to the ranch to surprise the Dirt Road Angels. So he came, him and his wife came too. And I surprised them. They were absolutely shocked. They were sitting, taking a break between sets. And I walked in and they just kind of wandered past them and smiled at them. And they, they, uh, they recognized me and they were like, oh! So it was, it was a really sweet surprise. Yeah. And I have these, these girls over to my house once or twice a year for wine night. And I go through all the jewelry I don't want or wear or clothes or whatever. And, and you know, we pick through it. We, we just have a good old girls night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, wonderful. Yeah. Rick Estrin. Yeah. Very, very grateful to this man. And funny. Have you ever listened to Rick's music? Uh. No, I don't think so. Is there a song that I would recognize? Oh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'm sure you would. He's, he's written mm. it. But mm. he, he, he does blues with mm. such a sense of humor. Oh, but, nice. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, this was at breakfast. Oh, no, I've got a drink in my hand. Well, it could have been breakfast. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, this was with uh, Chris Stone Kingfish. Yeah. <clears throat> Who, uh, who was underage at the time, his mom was still alive. Uh -huh. and, um, she kept a, a, a very close eye on, on Chris and made sure he behaved and, and, mm -hmm. and conducted himself like a future star would, the star that he'd become. And that is my cabin mate, Finn. And in the middle there is Terrence Grayson, who's Victor Wainwright's bass player, and me. And mm -hmm. I don't know who took the photo, but Mm-hmm. We were partying. <laughs> there you go with your uh yeah. yeah the that's uh, the result the result the... of four surgeries. Wow. Wow. They were brutal, brutal, but so worth it. A lot of pain. I went through a lot of pain, but mm -hmm. now I have none. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is really cool. I was um I I bid on it actually and won. Um the honor of presenting the award for tiny best tiny yard at the communities in bloom this is the inaugural award for tiny yard tiny front yard cool i know about community in bloom some of my friends have won it and uh yeah very cool yeah so i got to present the award for the first award ever for that and, uh, i i recognize i know this gentleman but tell me um about his name the... is john julian um yeah. john volunteered at the beaumont blues festival one year heard me sing at the after party and told me, you got to come to Calgary, you got to come to Calgary. So I called him up one day and said, okay, I'm going to come to Calgary. So he toured me around to all the different jams in Calgary. This is when I was first starting. And at one of the jams, uh, Kelly, um, Kelly J was there from Crowbar. And he was just out in the audience listening. Yeah. And when I walked in, Johnny Tornado was up on stage singing. And mid-song, he stopped and he went, Lynn! Lynn, and they were like, you got to turn her thing. Come on, then get up on stage, come sing. So he just stopped in the middle of a song and called me up on stage. Mm -hmm. um, I sang one song and I went and sat down. And John came over and he said, that's Kelly J over there and he wants to talk to you. So I walked over and said hi kind of thing. And he said that he was having this benefit coming mm -hmm. up. And would I, would I consider singing a couple tunes for this benefit? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, yes, absolutely, of course. So that, that was such a fun weekend. Oh, my goodness. So mm -hmm. I ended up getting to go down there and sing with Kelly J from Crowbar to Sunraiser. I got to meet the whole band. They reunited for his fundraiser. Um, nice. I got to sing with, uh, I got to share the stage with uh, Greg Godovitz, Gatto from Toronto, mm -hmm. Canadian guitarist. Oh, it was just incredible. And the crowd, the crowd was Phenomenal. They all like rushed up to the front of the stage kind of thing and, and just it really gave a, a a new artist a shot in the arm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, 
A reminder to uh, you know the fans and the uh, audience out there, there is such a thing as being a good audience, and there's such a thing as being a great audience, and there's such a thing as being a gracious audience. Um, you are part of the experience uh, that you want to create. So if you want a great experience, then go ahead and co-create it with the artist, I say. Yeah. And you know, here's the thing. Everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. So maybe they aren't you know, at the level of your expectations when you see them. Uh -huh. but, but if you give them enough encouragement and enough positive reinforcement, yeah. maybe six years later you'll see them again and they'll mm -hmm. blow you away because mm -hmm. because you didn't um, destroy them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Imagine if uh, as the flowers was blooming, not quite bloom yet, we just kill it because it's not quite there yet. Yeah. <laughs> they won't get there, right? <laughs> All right. Dave and Karen from California. Dave and Karen. The other Dave and Karen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call them. The other Dave and Karen. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. That's wonderful, my friend. What I want to do is I want to um, I want to really wrap it up with two things. One is any uh, final thoughts that you want to share before we wrap up. But also, if you are in the mood for it, share a video any video of either on your youtube or, or website or anything like that uh, i know there's uh, one video we have not shown on the website the middle one there uh, that could be a candidate but uh, sure. up to you my friend sure that'll work um and the only final thoughts i want to share are um that i want to thank everybody everybody in my life who's contributed anything my family they've really sacrificed a lot so that i could do what i do and I always say music has kept me company for the last 20 years. So. Mm -hmm. It's been mm -hmm. my, my, my constant companion. And everybody out there, fans, people in the behind the scenes, Facebook people, anybody, um, you've all contributed to this rich decade that I talk about. And yeah. Yeah, Th this video that I'm thinking of sharing is called uh, Second to None. Tell us about that before I roll it, my friend. That's the one I wrote with Deb Powers in Calgary. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote the lyrics and sent it down to her. I said, can we do something with this? And she wrote it back and she said, sure, give me a bit. About 20 minutes later, she sent back some, some tracks and I was like, okay, that works. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was my first sort of crack at, at, at songwriting. All and, right. Uh, not really the first crack. Uh, I was working with Dennis Manili. A lot of the originals that the band does were done with Dennis Manili. And he, he um, did a lot of the arranging, too. So did the band. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, one of the tunes that I do uh, was co-written with, with Jared Sow. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let me hit play, my friend, and uh, we'll enjoy it together here. This song is about an ex. <laughs> Like many are. <laughs> and bottom of the bottle, I do not advocate you to it over. You got a brand new baby. You still want my Can you hear it?
still there. <laughs> Can you hear me? You know, I muted myself and uh, I should, ah. uh, <laughs> I was just trying to manage the any possible feedback, but uh, um, fantastic, fantastic. And uh, I would like to um, just have you take us out here uh, in just a moment. And uh, in doing that, I think what this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, do that. And uh, I'm gonna bring it in and uh, we're going to, um, um, all right, my friend, uh, this is now yours. Um, it's your show to take us out. You can take as long as you like. You can take as little as you like. If you want to sing an a cappella version of something, feel free. Uh, actually, here that, uh, uh, you know, Michelle here hanging on, who says, dang, that was fun. So oh, hopefully uh, a lot of our viewers who are watching now later, uh, there's uh, Al um, Q uh, sort of chiming in again here. Really enjoyed it. And so thank you, folks. So Lynn, uh, I'm going to be completely, uh, uh, you know, quiet. And uh, when we're done, though, maybe stay in the green room for a couple of minutes. Let, let me just do a cheer there afterwards. That's uh, there afterwards. Uh, but but you take us out, my friend. I'm going to be completely quiet here. And uh, yeah, however you like to. And if you want to sing a song, feel free. <laughs> well, um, that's one of the things that I really have on my goals um, to accomplish is to A, finish a CD, and B, I really want to co-write with somebody mm -hmm. um, a blues melody, a slow blues tune. It's one of the things I want to have in my toolkit. So. Mm -hmm. so let me talk about these photos, perhaps. You've seen that one, that one. Um, again, I've had a, a, a really blessed life in the last, last decade of my life. It's just been blessed with good people, good musicians, mm -hmm. wonderful gigs, just adventures like crazy. My health has improved. Um, I have a career I just absolutely love. Hey, bedrock people. <laughs> and if you're looking for a new home, <laughs> we have something for everybody. Mm -hmm. And all our homes come now with smart home technology. There you go. And you know me in tech. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like, sounds like you need one of these new homes there, my oh, friend. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah. It's great. I walk in and say, Alexa, turn all the lights on and they all go on. Magic. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, yeah, that, that's my goal. I want to I record a, a nice slow breeze too. And sometimes when I look at pictures of myself singing that, that people have taken, and it's funny, I see that I see the emotion in my face and some of them, I don't even know what song I'm singing, but I, by the emotion on my face, it almost makes me like cry. I've got a lot of pain in me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I smile and I joke and stuff. But I got a lot of pain in me, so thank God for the blues. Mm -hmm. Um, which are actually a happy, a happy blues is actually a happy genre. genre. Mm -hmm. That's cool, anyways. Um, what can I say? Um, Remember, you're welcome to do a s song or a really part, part of a song, part of a song. You be special. Okay, let's see if I can remember the words. This is a Shanika Copeland tune. Um, if I can remember, probably only remember the first verse or two, but here goes. Just what I done wrong is anybody's guess, but the bruise on my cheek. Is as blue as my dress. Broken bottle on the table. Broken lamp on the floor. About a thousand miles from the bed to the door. <laughs> Lipstick on his collar from my lap. Took a ten from his wallet. Gave the maid a tip. Ain't gonna be your tattoo. Ain't gonna be your tattoo. End up faded and blue. Ain't gonna be your tattoo. Stepped out of the room, trying not to be seen. 
only sound an old ice machine they say 30 years old but i'm even older guess that's when the nights got even colder ain't gonna be your tattoo ain't gonna be your tattoo end up faded and blue ain't gonna be your tattoo yeah, it's kind of all i remember <laughs> thanks june you've been listening to lynn schwill my friends and uh have a wonderful evening and afternoon and weekend now that it's Friday afternoon. And uh, take good care of yourself, folks, and take good care of one another. And until we meet again, have a wonderful weekend. And uh, Lynn, thank you so much for sharing Hi, your music and your insights and your stories with us, my friend. Thank you so much. And uh, be kind, everyone. Be kind to your fellow man. It's, uh, nobody gets out alive. Bye-bye.